tensor part 2. Well, in the previous video of tensor, what we have seen is that we have shown you uh, what is the basic definition of a tensor, what can be called as the rank of a tensor. We also found what is called uh, a dyad, a triad, and what are the essential features like how do you draw a matrix of a tensor, how do you name the ranks of a tensor, how on a tensor cube you would find out the values of x, y, and z. So that was basically a basic introduction of tensor. I got a good amount of response from a YouTube channel. People are asking me about tensor. Definitely tensor is an important subject, especially in fluid mechanics, engineering, and obviously in physics in the area that we work into. So this would be a continuation of the first part. I have drawn certain figures. As you can see, this is a box and I have drawn x, y, and z coordinates. We would be speaking a little bit about this topic, right? Stress tensor. But we won't be going much deep into these topics because stress tensor itself is a big subject. So I wish someday I would be able to uh, create a videos uh, only and exclusively on stress tensor. However, in this part of the video, let me go forward and expand few more concepts, few more uh, detailed uh, understanding of what a tensor is all about. So that is what is the agenda of this video. Now, before we go ahead uh, with analyzing tensors, etc., what I would also like to tell you is that what essentially is the basic feature, I, I would say what is a unique feature and of a tensor. We have been using, you know, magnitude, direction, etc. What is required or what is the need that we need to have a tensor? For that, what I would uh, just draw a basic diagram. Now, see, for example, in case of a vector, typically what use we used to do. Say, for example, if we get a x and y axis, say, for example, this is the x axis and this is the y axis, right? And what I am showing is that, say, for example, there is a force which is applying in this uh, direction. And I, I, I assume that this force is of 2 newtons. And this is uh, taking place at an angle of 30 degrees. This is theta, so it would be 30 degrees, right? So what we see is that in order to, uh, in order to uh, say for example, we mention this as vector v. So in order to know anything about this particular vector, uh, we can use this vector v. And what is the magnitude? I write it as 2 newtons. And what is the angle? We write it, say, in the, in the direction of 30 degrees in the direction of 30 degrees. So here is the magnitude. How much? 2 newtons. Which direction? 30 degrees. Now for example, this is particular to a vector. But the problem arises that a vector can be denoted by these two components. Magnitude, so let me write it as m, and direction, which is d. But in case of a, stra in, in case of a, uh, a special uh, scenario, say for example we uh, take it as stress stress okay stress has magnitude and direction but it has another component which is called the plane of application so let me write it for you stress has one mag one part which is the magnitude so i just name it as uh, call it as magnitude right stress is also in which direction so we have a direction and stress requires another component which is called plane of application. Now this is something uh, which is new. Plane of application. So the plane of application, obviously the plane of application of the force. So what I am trying to tell you is that vector has been denoted by the magnitude and direction but for example if I take a special, uh, if I take a stress and if I draw a certain cube, say for example this one this is a nice little cube and it uh, shows the three dimension effect. Now uh, say for example the 6 has how many faces? It has got 6 faces. So I am just taking this front face okay, and this part. 1 and 2, 3 and the back, 5 and the 6. So if I want to know that what is the stress in this particular, in, in this particular plane, I call this as plane X. So I can draw a y axis, a x axis and a z axis. 
So I can get the magnitude and the direction, but uh, I also need to get this plane. So this plane is, say for example, x. This plane can be y. This plane can be z. So anything which is happening on the plane of application, that means this part or this part or the top or the bottom or at the back. So that is why tensor comes to use. That is why tensors come to use. Because in case of a vector, we have magnitude and direction. We have magnitude, direction and the plane of application. So I hope I can make things clear that tensor is a special case where not only magnitude and direction is required, but in which direction this stress or the force is applying, that is called the plane of application, that is missing and that is what makes tensor very unique, right? So I can, uh, as I have uh, talked to you earlier, that any scalar quantity, so I call it as S, so any scalar quantity is of zero order tensor. So I call it zero order tensor. That means say for example 400 kilograms or 32 degree Fahrenheit, anything. So vector, I call it as V with an arrow, is a first quantity of one first order tensor. And stress, so I call it this way, we will come to know stress, for example, is a second order tensor, right? So that makes it a scalar as a zero order tensor, vector as a first order tensor, and uh, uh, stress as a second order tensor, right? Now, what are the, uh, we have seen, seen in the first uh, earlier video that we have talked a lot about the summations like uh, the notations of index Txy, Txz, so I would like to explain to you what is the meaning of those indexes. Okay, so for that I need to draw a matrix and I need to show you how this will come to use. So I have got a mix matrix over here. Say so for example I use uh, tau xx, right? Then we have got tau xy and I have got tau xz, right? And then we have got tau yz, I've got tau yy, and I've got tau yz. And then coming to the third part, that is tau zx, then tau zy, and tau zz, right? This is basically the uh, rank 1, that is it has got 3339 three, components, okay. Now I also need to draw a, a cube vis-a-vis -vis so that you can understand and let me draw, draw a little bit bigger so that I can show you the coordinates and I can make you understand. So this is the three-dimensional cube, right? Okay, now <coughs> say for example, now say for example, I am taking the first, first uh, this part, this one, tau xx. Okay, so we know that we, I am calling this, this one, if I take it uh, like uh, x, y and z, so I call this as x that is a plane, that is this surface would be x, this would be surface y, and this would be surface z, right? These are the surfaces in which this cube stands. And each of the surface would have a axis, x, y, z, and x, y, z. I'm not naming this surface like tau y, y, or tau x, z, because it becomes too cumbersome. Now you see the first component over here, right? So say for example, let me, let me write it for you. If I come across a component which is say xy, let, let me generalize it first. So we have got tau xy, right? Now, say for example, I take the first one. This is x, right? This is x. So what does this first x denotes? This denotes the plane, the plane on which stress is occurring, occurring. So I call it as plane on which 
So I, uh, currently I'm mentioning stress, but it can be elasticity, it can be uh, whatever. So plane on which stress is occurring, right? So, and this is the first part, this is the first subscript. What does the second subscript denotes? That is Y. Y denotes the direction in which stress is ex act acting. So direction, I just mentioned it as direction. Okay. So, and we know uh, in general that by, uh, yeah, so that, that, that is how. So the first one, it, it denotes the plane on which is X is happening. Now, let me give you an example. So if I take the first one, tau XX, tau XX, that means what is the first script which is going plane on which is occurring. So this is, as I told you, this is the X plane and the direction in which the stress is occurring. That means this is happening in the direction of X, right? Now you see uh, the horizontal part of this matrix, if I take this part, this all has YY, ZZ and XX. So that means if I take this part, this is tau YY, that means this part. So the plane on which stress is occurring, the plane is Y and which is the direction in stress is occurring, this is, this is Y. Similarly, the tau ZZ, what is the plane? The plane is Z and the direction in which the stress is occurring, that is Z. And this is what is called a stress. This is basically a stress tensor. So now, so what we, go, what we get from the first part, what we get from the first part, that is the, uh, that is the subscript, the different subscripts. So if I get a similar kind of a subscript, it is called a, a simple stress, right? Right. So this part, if it is happening in the same way, it is called plane stress. So the diagonal, let me write it for you. So this tau xx, tau yy and tau zz, this is the plane stress, right? And if I get, yeah, so it is occurring in the same direction, the plane in which it is occurring. And if it is different, this is tau xy, that means uh, the first would be the plane on which it is occurring x, this is x, but the direction is in y. That means it is a shear stress. So I can tell tau xy uh, or for example tau xz, so on. This is what is called shear stress. This is called shear stress. And if it is happening in the same direction, it is called simple or plane stress. This is plane stress. So now you see, if I, if I take this matrix, particularly this matrix, that means I have got everything, isn't it? So the matrix tells the magnitude and the value in the cells. That means this, these, these should be either say 10, 11, 12 or whatever. We will see in, the, in, the, in my coming video how we can show that. This diagonal part, as I told, that means the stress which is happening in the X plane, in the X direction, stress which is happening in the Y plane, in the Y direction, stress which is happening in the Z plane, in the Z direction. This is simple or plain stress, right? Any subscript which has got a different one, say for example this one, that tau ZY, what does it mean? That means stress it is which is happening, as I told you, this, this one, the first one, plane in which it is occurring, the plane is Z, this one. And in which axis, uh, in which way the stress is happening? Y. Fine. Let us take this one, tau yz. Which is, which is the, uh, uh, what is the first part? Plane in which it is occurring, y plane. In which direction it is happening? This direction. That is how it is called tau yz. So the diagonal part actually is the simple or the plane stress. And those which has got different indices, yz or zx, it is called a shear stress. So that brings us to the first understanding that why I call you that why tensor is important because magnitude and direction are the two features but plane of application is something. So this is how we show that in a typical three-dimensional uh, object how and what does this mean. So the values of the first and the second what does it actually mean. So that is what the, uh, makes tensor so special. Now let me come to the second part, 
and what I will do is that I will just make a quick revision on the earlier part. I think we we have already gone through it, so I don't. I will just take a, a quick uh, review on what we have learned. I think we have uh, we have learned in the earlier part what is a diode. So I will just uh, quickly put across to it. We know what is a diode, right? And we have seen that in our previous examples uh, in a quicker way how we can write the diode. So we can put it uh, something like this, like A, 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 and then the final row A, A, A. This would be going in this direction, that is top to bottom. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is, uh, this is happening in the first component which is going in this direction. Uh, then we have got, as I told you, that we will go in this direction. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, and 3. So that actually makes up a diode. We also have seen what is a triode. It is a longer one. So I won't be explaining much on this. So triode, and we know what it is. So uh, I will just make a quick review. It has got a total of 27 components. So we can just write it as A, 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 A. I will uh, stick to this. So it would be 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. We can take it forward and it would be 1, 2, 3. It would be 1, 2, 3. And then for the first part it would be all 1, all 1. And when you're going from this part to one, it will be increasing. Okay, fine. Now, let me quickly write, uh, there's a small correction over my last video in which we talked about Einstein's field equation. So I will just, uh, uh, um, uh, although this is not the uh, real part in which we will speak about Einstein field equation, but I will just quickly uh, tell you that this R mu nu minus half of G mu nu R plus G uh, mu nu then comes the lambda part it equals to so I will just uh, put it in the next line it equals to or I can just put it over here not much elements 8 pi G and then comes the speed of light C4 T mu nu right so what we see over here I, I just forgot to mention one element these are tensors this one is a tensor this one is a tensor this one is a tensor and this one is a tensor and I would like to tell you that this mu and nu these are basically dimensions in space and time these are dimensions in space time right and this mu nu takes the value of 0 1 2 and 3 right I'm not discussing Einstein's field equation right now I'm just giving you an overview this is time this is the x coordinate this is the y coordinate and this is the z coordinate right so in total you are see, uh, watching 16 uh, equations but six of them are a repetition so we call them ten uh, total equations just to tell you a little bit more on this part that this part r mu nu is something which we called as Ricci curvature tensor this is Ricci curvature tensor so this is one tensor right then what we have got uh, we have got G mu nu this is by far the most important G nu mu nu is called the metric tensor so this is also a tensor so you will understand why tensors are important right then we have got R R is basically a curvature scalar it is a curvature scalar right and uh, we have got this lambda which is a constant this is called a cosmological constant there are a lot of stories about cosmological constant and T mu nu this is called stress this is a quite a complex one stress energy momentum tensor 
So uh, we will discuss someday about it. It is called stress energy momentum tensor. So that actually gives you a detailing about uh, Einstein's field equation. So as, we, as you see that there are uh, different tensors, R mu nu, R mu nu, uh, this is G mu nu which is a metric tensor and then this is just G mu nu which is a metric tensor, this both and uh, T mu nu is also called a stress energy momentum tensor. So I will just give a pause to this video right now and I will be uh, taking up more onto this uh, in the coming part which will be dealing with vectors etc. I hope you like this video. We are not done yet. This is just an initial part. We will start with the second part. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice time.